Friday. Happy Friday. What's going on, beautiful people? Whoop, whoop. And yes, welcome to another episode of Ladies Night Radio Show. I am your host, Mysterious Jax. This is Ladies Night Radio Show. And we're coming to you live from the Good News Studio tonight and every Wednesday and Friday night. For the whole month of July, you get the double the pleasure of the ladies. That's right. So make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Friday to your girls right here in the studio. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. We're getting the weekend started. And it's going to be a good time. And speaking of the good news, I have to I have to remind all of you, we are currently having a fundraiser for this growing network, as you may know. This fundraiser will help us improve our app to give our listeners a better experience and it will also help improve a lot of stuff here in the studio so you'd be helping so many creators uh, and up-and-coming radio personalities like myself so if you are interested in donating even if it's just a dollar please 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 go to our instagram at the good news radio and the link is in our bio so thank you again to everyone who's already donated we really appreciate you we see you and we are so grateful for help, for you helping us keep the network alive and growing thank you so much and of course i am not alone here in the studio i got my intern on the on the board over here we got crazy maria shots fired shots fired burr, 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 burr. Shots fired. Hey. <laughs> no, not in a negative way. I was trying to get my bullhorn going, so I was trying to liven it up. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. It's Crazy Maria on the mic. What's up, Crazy Maria? Hey, how you doing, my sister over Good. here to my right? How are you holding up doing twice a week now? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I was telling my, I actually was uh, comment, telling my mom yesterday, and she was like, bendito sea Dios. Oh, my God. <laughs> why? Because she's, like, happy that, you know, you got another day on here. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, she's, like, you know, excited. Do you, f- do you feel it, like, throughout the week? Because I know, you you know, working all day and then having to come here and drive and all that. Do you not, feel it? Not really. I mean, I look forward to coming here. And, you know, it's like, it's kind of like when you have kids, you you look for these little <laughs> oh, moments away. I love my kids. I wouldn't know. Moments away. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I so wouldn't I enjoy know. It. I enjoy doing this. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us here in Ladies Night on the air, on the good news, on the app, and also on my Instagram Live. I'll be on live for about maybe 10 minutes, and then I'm going to wrap it up. But if I end it and you're on my Instagram Live, please head over to the Good News Radio app download it it's free and it's amazing and you can join us in the chat box uh give a shout out we can read your comments on air and if you want to give anybody a shout out a cheers a happy birthday go ahead and put it in the chat box and we'll definitely uh cheer them out later on tonight during our segment of cheers all right but of course i'm also not alone i got another another guest co-host today that will be joining me for a few months we're gonna try it out she's got her whole her whole new segment on ladies night and we got the amazing goddess Lore. Hey, how's Ooh. everybody doing tonight? It's Friday. Hey. <laughs> goddess Lore is currently joining us and doing a new segment with us called Ride the Vibe with Goddess Lore, where she pretty much reads us. What would it, what, how did you explain this? I always forget. You know, we just, we're going to mix it up. Whatever's okay. going on, whatever but you're the vibe the cards, is, right? whatever the mood is. I always pull a card, yes. Yeah, from where? So they can from know. my tarot deck. So from her tarot deck, she's going to pull a card, and it's going to kind of create the vibe that we should be expecting for the weekend. That's right. Okay, so you tune in it. for that. That'll be later on in the show. You don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. Do we have our next guest on, on, uh, on our Zoom yet, Maria? We should have them. We're expecting one more guest, but they will be joining us via Zoom um, just because, you know, they couldn't join us in the studio today. But it's okay. We're going to send them just as much love. But Maria, crazy Maria. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Hold on. He's not here yet. Okay. She'll let us know once he joins the Zoom um, and then I'll introduce him then. Well, while we wait for him to join, we're going to go ahead and do an update on the quarantine life. If you don't know already, um, we actually are on day 137. Yes. Wow. We're on one day. Th- I know. Ooh. I know. And um, Los Angeles County on Thursday reported that 59 more deaths of COVID-19 patients. And we have actually 4,000 new cases, which is a single day high and confirmed in coronavirus infections. Yeah, with more than 147,000 cases of the virus, the county has entered what health director 
Barbara Ferreira described on Wednesday as an alarming and dangerous phase. Now, I don't want to scare anybody. This is not to like give more anxiety or stress. This is just from coming from you know what they're reporting. Um, we don't get more anxiety. I'm not trying to end on that. I just want to keep you guys informed on where where we're standing with this uh, pandemic. These are the facts. These are the facts. You know, and a total of uh, 3,900 people have recently. I mean, have died during this whole pandemic, which you know. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Garment factories, meat packing plants, food processing centers are among the Los Angeles County employers experiencing the worst coronavirus outbreaks, according to the health officials. And they are um, they actually have one here. Um, I guess the worst outbreak is locally to us. It's called uh, was at Los Angeles Apparel. It's a manufacturer started by the founder of American Apparel, where four workers have died already. Wow. And um, in total, they have 375 that have tested positive Wow! in just this one warehouse. So that's really scary. And I know a lot of people are still working or I, I don't even know if they're considered essential workers, but I know a lot of people still went back to work. Um, and that's not that's not looking good no, at all. So that's, that's kind of sounding like sweatshop situation. And that's like what they were saying. Poor circulation. Because they're working so close yep. together and they're they're exposing it and stuff. They're probably not following the social distancing or even right. the mask and stuff because it's so hot already. So I can't even imagine. Um, also, and for parents who are concerned about sending their kids back to school, Governor Newsom stated today at the press conference that schools in the counties could not reopen with physical classes until they get and stay off the watch list for two consecutive weeks. Even then, school districts and public health officials will play a hand in deciding if and when they reopen. For schools that are reopening, students in third grade and above must wear masks, stated by the governor. So I know, mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, that are you going to be sending your kids to school if your their, kid, their schools are open? I mean, no, not initially. I, I just... There's no way that they can control it in a school setting. Like if us as adults can't follow the rules to social distance and wear masks, how can we expect like our little ones to do it? You know? Right. And and the thing is, you know, they don't they rarely get symptoms. They get symptoms that are different from ours, but they're the carriers. When you think about like people of color or minorities, um, you think about how many of us have kids and they live with their grandparents or they visit their grandparents or you know, uh, that they expose a lot of adults. So you're, you're, you're not going to send them back, even if the school opens for your, your, your kids, your boys. I would have to see what, what the guidelines are and what they're going to do, because I think we can map it out in our head. I work at a school also, and it's hard for me to wrap my mind around like how this is all going to work, you know, cause right. you have to take temperatures. You have to make sure that they're not having symptoms. You have to have like a quote unquote, like symptom room. So anybody who's having, symptoms has to stay in that room until they get picked up adults and students so I don't know it's a little crazy I do have to say though that both my sons are like super hyped to go back to school they're like they want to go back to school they're ready and I'm just like since when (laughs) you want to be going back to school but they're over it you know school got cut early so they're like ready to get back I think most kids are like that too they're like enjoying this big summer break and on my last guest guess uh, Wednesday with Ruthie she's actually explained and um, what's going on to the to her son so that they're fully aware and it's not just a big long summer break and they're right. being more cautious of washing right. their hands covering their mouths so yeah um, just um, just to let you know Maria Jorge texted me he said that you just got to give him access he said he's just waiting for you to give him some access okay <laughs> you see that red part right there on all the way in the left where it's red at the bottom with the video camera, I believe? It says end. No, all the way to your left. Here. Hey, while yeah, you're working that? that out, I want to give a big shout out to my fam in San Diego who's listening hey. live. What up? Love y'all. Okay. What's going on, Maria? I can't hear you. It says cannot detect. So, oh, okay. Um, it cannot detect camera, but yeah, I could do it audio. So I text you the um, audio information where he could call in and we'll be able to hear him. Okay, hold on. I'm going to have to end my Instagram. All right, it's okay. We still in retrograde, y'all. I know, There's right? Still planets in retrograde, <laughs> messing with our technology. And this is what it is. This is real live radio. Mm-hmm. We're trying to get mm-hmm. our listener in here. Um, let's see. Cancel this. 
Let me just share it on my story. So how was your day, Lori? No, no, no. Here. <laughs> Don't start that. Don't do that. Okay, here. Um. <laughs> I mean, I could keep talking. <laughs> I know, right? Well, no. Okay, so I'm trying to understand where you are on the... on the. It doesn't look like a regular Zoom. That's why I was looking at it, and you're like, it's not looking like that. I don't know. You want to walk her through that, Lori, if you can? Well, well in the, they're figuring that part out. I'm going to go ahead and jump into... Um, into the cheese mail of the night. That's right. Today, hey, <laughs> Jorge, we haven't forgotten about you. We're coming right now, okay? All right. So, crazy me, I think one of the city officials from Manhattan Beach listened to Ladies Night on Wednesday because they took your idea and made it a reality. Yes. Manhattan Beach uh, became the latest city in Los Angeles County to begin fining people not wearing masks in an effort to curb the spread of the coronavirus. So by uh, a four to one vote they out over there in Manhattan Beach, if you're caught, the Manhattan Beach City Council approved an emergency order under which those that are not wearing the mask can receive a $100 citation. Yes, the fine will increase with each additional offense. It's just crazy. And I know a lot of cities were already going to start trying this, but Manhattan Beach is one of the first cities to actually put it into play and start charging people or fining them $100 if they if you are caught in the street without a mask. Yes. <laughs> What's going on? Do you want me to have him just call in since you guys can't figure that out? He can just. So I sent you the numbers. That no, that's fine. I'm gonna have him call into the into the Skype. So um, Jorge, if you're listening, just call three two three nine hundred zero four seven eight. I'm so sorry. We tried to figure out the whole Zoom, but it was just not connecting for us here in the studio. But just go ahead and call the number three two three nine hundred zero four seven eight, and yeah. 2020 adjusting expectations you know it is what it is exactly exactly while we wait for him to call in we're gonna go into some more cheese man i don't know if you guys have heard but meg the stallion this past weekend was partnered up with tori lanes and kylie jenner at a pool party later on that night early sunday morning y'all megan the stallion was shot in the foot when she and tori lanes were leaving the party um, that's crazy to me. Like it's okay. I'm like, first of all, I have so many questions already. <laughs> Megan says that the narrative. Okay. So she's, I guess people have been joking. They've been saying things online. They've been doing memes and I get that it happens. It's like random. She got shot in the foot. Like what? Uh, but she went on to, um, her social media to say that the narrative that is being reported about Sunday's morning's events are inaccurate. And I would like to set the record straight on Sunday morning. I suffered a gunshot wound as a result of a crime that was committed against me Mm -hmm. and done with the intention to physically harm me. So this was not an accident. And this is coming straight from Meg the Stallion. Yes. Um, LAPD did not, did find a handgun in the SUV that was um, in the uh, driving by Tory, Tory lanes. Mm -hmm. And it was a Meg and another woman in the car with them. And Tory was booked for possession of a concealed weapon. And just today, Meg Thee Stallion tweeted this. And this is coming straight from her her um, um, Twitter. Black women are so unprotected and we hold so many things in to protect the feelings of others without considering our own. It might be funny to y'all on the Internet and just another messy topic for you to talk about. But this is my real life and I'm real life hurt and traumatized. That's real. Like, That's real talk. Okay, this kind of, I was telling Maria, like, on the drive over here, I was like, I have a feeling that it was Tory Lanez that shot her. But those are still, like, it's not been I mean, said. what is his beef? It's like, bitch, your TikTok is too popping. I'm going like, to. Right. <laughs> well, he's got, cor- like, <laughs> he's got quarantine radio, so I don't get it. Dude, he's got fucking bitches twerking. Like, what? Like, he's got his own shit. And Tory Lanez has been around for a while. A lot longer than Megan the Stallion. Like, what is the beef? Yeah. You're going to shoot a female? He's got little man syndrome. He's short as fuck. Okay, well, okay. (laughs) First of all, I'm not going to go into that. But yes, I will say that we don't know the whole story. We don't even know if it's really Tory Lanez. But whoever it is, she's protecting them. She's already, like, saying that she's not going to... Oop, let's answer that. Hey. 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 We had a call. Yes, Kala Kala. Is this my guest of the night? Yes, it's me. Woo! <laughs> Welcome. Ladies, 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 ladies. How 
Maria. I know. Baby, I don't know what's going on. She don't really use Zoom like that. So when she was trying to figure it out, she was like, ah, I don't know where to go for this. So. This is Apple Zoom. It's, it's, a, right. it's a planet. We'll give her a pass. Right. We'll give her a pass. It's Apple Zoom, she yes, said. I'm glad to be here with you guys. <laughs> Welcome. If you guys don't know that voice already, this is a friend of the ladies, Ladies Night Radio. This is Jorge Solapa Jr. He is a director, film director, and he's my friend, and he's going to be war- winning. Yes, give him a lot of love. He's going to be winning a lot of awards real soon. Yo, if but you guys haven't yeah. heard this man, he <laughs> is so inspirational. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, um, just beware when you put lower down. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what were you saying, Jorge? No, I said thank you so much for the kind introduction. I'm really happy to be back. Yes, well, I'm so glad that you could join us via phone because I know um, you couldn't come into the studio today. But that's okay. You know, you're still here with us. And you know you're always welcome to come through. Um, but yeah, so we, I want to introduce you. We have a guest co-host. Her name is Goddess Lore, and she's going to be doing a segment later on tonight. Hey, Jorge. I'm excited. Okay, I'm excited. Hi. So just to let you know, she reads uh, tarot cards. So, you know, if you ever, if you want to get your I cards heard. read online, you, I mean, over the phone, you can. And if you have any question or anything that you want answered. <laughs> I got you, Jorge. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. Well, just really quick, we're going it's still into the cheese, man. We were just talking about Meg the Stallion and how she, um, you know, what she tweeted earlier today about her being shot in the foot. And she just... I was saying that she is not going to speak to the the police officers. She's already saying that um, she cut her foot on the glass and she didn't report it like that she was shot. So she's protecting somebody, even though in another message, she said that this was this person was trying to harm right. her. Because she had to have surgery, right? She yeah. Went in, they, what? She had to have surgery. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Removed, yeah. I think it was. A couple bullets? Yeah, it was crazy. So I'm I need to know. I need answers. Like why are y'all coming for my girl Meg the Stallion? Yeah. Like she's just living her best life. She hasn't done nothing to nobody. She's just making good music for us to shake our asses. Exactly. I don't get it. I, I mean, don't get it. Her body is banging. Yes. She is, it is. No not just the body. She is a whole damn meal. She's a whole package. <laughs> she's, a she's a stallion. She's a stallion. Yeah, she but is savage. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and go into tonight's topic already. Um, and just pretty much kind of go over. So um, if you guys don't know, today we're talking about the DACA um, and the Dreamers. Um, because, you know, this is something also very close to all of us, especially if you're Latino. You, you know somebody that is a Dreamer that's in the DACA program. So we want to make sure that we are bringing some light to the new information that's being updated as well. And, you know, actually, Jorge is one person that's going through this. Um, through all these changes so it's definitely that we want to talk about it and we had to talk about it with Jorge you know what I mean so um, just to yes. let you guys know a federal judge in Maryland on Friday ordered Trump administrator to fully reinstate the DACA um, arrivals or the program on uh, an Obama era in- initiative that shields hundreds of thousands of undocumented immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as children from deportation so the order came by Judge Paul Grimm of the U.S. District Court in Maryland, and it requires the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to restore the DACA to the way it operated before the administration tried to terminate it in the fall of 2017. And a Supreme Court opinion last month had prevented um, DHS from moving forward with its plans to dismantle DACA, but Friday's order instructed that the department open the program to hundreds and thousands of potential new applicants. So they just weren't allowing to, t- they weren't accepting new applicants. Right. So they didn't like dismantle it, but they weren't moving forward with how it's mm-hmm. supposed to be moving. Um, and how do you feel about that, Jorge, being a recipient um, of DACA? Well, first of all, I think that it's, uh, you know, the fact that the Supreme Court was able to uh, push on Trump's uh, administration kind of shut down for what you know, what the DACA program is, I think that was a great victory. It's still not what we need. Um, we we still we're still fighting for more because uh, evidently there's a lot of DACA recipients who, uh, you know, been here for a very long time, including myself, and we contribute to this country as much as any other American citizen. So the fact that the Supreme Court, even um, two conservative uh, Supreme Court justices, sided with with uh, DACA, that that's a huge victory. Second. Um, you know, this judge who approved uh, for the order to continue and uh, for new cases to be uh, to be accepted, that's great as well, because I think that there's a lot of DACA recipients that had been left in the dark since uh, 2017 when uh, Trump administration tried to stop it. Yes. So it, it, it's all great victory, but we still need more. I mean, there's still a fight that, that, that we have to move forward with. And, um, you know, like I always tell people, I don't like mentioning 
this administration uh, because I, you know, they don't deserve our attention. But regardless, with or without a paper, we're not going anywhere. And I said that publicly. I said that nationally. I said that in all news outlets. And I'll say it again. Right. You know, um, we love trying to kick us out because we're not going anywhere. At any point, do you worry? Do you get anxiety just thinking like that one moment, like you can just be gone? You know, I did. I did um, for for the last. And I think it happened because of the pandemic that this decision was being uh, made at a time where we just don't know where we're standing, uh, you know, right now with with COVID. And, you know, the Supreme Court uh, gives answers every Monday and every Thursday. So for the last about three months since the pandemic started, every Monday and every Thursday was kind of an anxiety, uh, a day filled with anxiety because we just didn't know what was happening. Yeah. And the day that I finally stopped caring, I got a text message from my manager who said, the Supreme Court sided with DACA, you, you get to stay. And I was like, great. Um, uh, but, but regardless, you know, I, I don't like to think about me not being here because, again, you know, um, unless Trump himself wants to come to my house and, you know, take me to Mexico, <laughs> then I'm not going anywhere. He better drive I'm you not. in his limo. <laughs> if he has one, because I don't think he's as rich as he thinks he is. Ooh, um, he shot fire. Definitely not as rich as he says returns. he is. Right, shots fire. <laughs> pop, pop, yeah. pop. That yeah. is crazy. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm relieved. Like, people really have a, a bad impression. Like, you guys, at the end of the day, still work. You pay your taxes. You have been living here since, well, I, I don't know. I forgot what age you were here. But there's many, many uh, recipients. That, since you were nine. And there was many recipients that were here, yeah. like, like when they were one, a few months old. Like, so this is the only, like, uh, country that they know, you know? So it's just yeah. crazy that they just want to send them back over just because they weren't born here. But it's um, something that we're going to keep fighting for. We're going to keep hoping that it goes well for you know for us and and for anybody that you know in this program it's 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 a scary feeling just to know that any moment like they could just take this away and you're going to be sent back yeah. to you know the country that you were born in so i mean i just want to say when too, i think like, it's more than that sorry go ahead just the bravery that it took to even apply for that program I know there was so much yeah. fear when the program came out, and that's how they keep us in the shadows, you know, uh, with fear. And the fact that there was so many individuals that came out and signed up for this and said, like, hey, we're here. We're contributing to society. This is our country. Like, we're not going anywhere. You know, we got your back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were you going to say? Thank you. No, and I appreciate that. No, I, I, and I said that I think that, you know, it's beyond, you know, DACA recipients. Uh, fear and deportation you know we have to remember that some of us have families here like you know our parents or siblings you know I'm lucky to have uh, you know my siblings who have you know been able to work uh, their uh, immigration status but regardless some people don't have that luxury and the thing is that you know there's this whole rumor going around that um, this administration is going to present an executive order to to uh, allow a citizenship path uh, for us and it still doesn't change my point of view on who Trump is. You know, we can't forget that he's a bigot, he's a racist, he's a xenophobe. He's yes. just, he's a yes. swastika yes. can. That's yes. what I call him because he's, he's just a despicable human being. And if he does, in fact, give a citizen pass um, for, for undocumented immigrants, it still doesn't make him a good person. I mean, he's doing the right thing. But we have to remember that, you know, he's, he's just not, he's just, he needs to be quoted out. So I just want to take this time to say, people, vote. You got to go out and vote. Yes. And if you don't know how to vote, Reach out to me on social media. I'll help you. I'll help you sign up. I'll help you register to vote. But you guys have to vote because it does matter. Your civil duty does matter. And if you don't vote, then you're 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 agreeing with what Trump is saying. Just remember that. Yeah, right. he's he's playing politics. He's playing politics. It's like this is what they do. It's like it's that little crumb that they give you to try try to get an entire community to say, oh, he has our back. We're gonna we're gonna vote for him. And it's it's not it's not genuine. Right. It's not genuine. It's like look at everything he's done since the moment he announced that he was going to run for president, and he came out and called Mexicans rapists and you know drug dealers and whatnot. And he has shown himself. Well, he definitely did that to get the attention of you know those people that already are racist and hate yeah. us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yep. he knows exactly what he's doing when he says those things. Um, and this whole Goya thing too. Now it's just. It's like really like we're going through a pandemic and you're doing a photo shoot with your daughter with yeah, holding no. beans. I'm like, pretty this sure is that shit's illegal mm. too. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you shouldn't <laughs> can be doing that. Yeah. But I have to say the funniest thing that I saw was a friend of mine who posted like, 
y'all still eating Goya? Like, when you were kids, maybe you didn't have a choice. <laughs> but as an adult, <laughs> like, y'all still buying that? I, Jorge posted something, too. It said something like, dang, like, yeah. I don't even buy Goya. I'm, I, I feel, feel so left out, out <laughs> that I can't boycott it because I already don't use it. And I was like, same. I feel the same because I don't really buy Goya same. at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, come on, let's be let's be honest. The people that probably buy Goya are the same people that don't know how to really cook beans. Ooh. No offense to anybody. Shots if fired. You, if, you use, if you use if you use Goya or the Rosario beans from the can, you don't know. You like you you are probably gonna be single forever because you don't know how to cook. So, oh my god! The good fact luck that. With that. You're, okay, really quick. I have to. I have to expose myself. I do have one can of the Rosarita beans, but it's only because when I'm really craving the bean dip, and I don't feel like making a whole Listen. olla de, de you know frijoles. I'm with you. I'm, I'm a know. Vista, I know. I'll do but, I, Vista. but I say, I'll say this. I'm not the best cook. I can get by. I can cook. I've cooked food, and they're like, okay, this is good. I've gotten approval from my mom and my dad. Good. But I just don't like. To, I just don't <laughs> like to good. cook. I don't like to cook. Maybe but, I haven't found the right partner to cook with. Maybe that's what go. it is. Jorge just did like Maybe. a Tory, uh, Tory Lane's pra, pra, pra. allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> we, shots fired. We need to download that on here. Oh, yeah, we will. We'll definitely do that. <laughs> so I also want to talk about a project that you have coming up, Jorge, and you actually were inspired by these recent events, correct? Yes, yes. So I ended up... Uh, writing a series that I, I'm shooting in February with uh, with Laura Flores and Plutar Guasa, who are two major Mexican stars. And, Ooh, it, you know, it wasn't necessarily inspired by the pandemic, but I, I got inspired during the pandemic. And um, it was it's, it's a series, it's, it's in the vein of uh, Big Little Lies meets Sharp Objects. But the, I think the most amazing part is that uh, it's an entire Latino cast, and it, it's in English, Beautiful. which is what we don't have right now. Right. You know, we have about... I think we have about 400 TV shows on network and none of them have Latinos in it. So right. it's, it's important for me that, you know, we, we, we move forward and we're not only telling stories about um, undocumented immigrants, because again, that's, that's where I fall in and those stories are valid. But I think that it's important that we show that, um, you know, Latinos come in all shapes, size and colors. You know, I, you know, there's attorneys, there's doctors, there's, there's dentists, there's all kinds of, of Latinos. And, you know, it's important. It's important for me. So I'm really, really excited um, to, to jump into this journey because it's, it's, it's a big deal for me. I'm so excited for you. And, and okay, so I know it has a whole full Latino cast. Have you guys started filming yeah. yet? or? No, we start filming in February, which is, uh, you know, it was, it was primarily we did that because of what's going on with the pandemic. Um, I, I was supposed to start shooting my new film in August with another uh, two Mexican stars. And in English here, but um, we had to push because the the reason uh, we went back to phase one, so we're pushing everything to to uh, January and February of next year. Okay, okay, got it. Unfortunately, um, no. I mean, yeah. that's understanding. There's a lot of things that are like happening like that. Um, but I, I I wanted to know. I don't know if you can how much you can tell, but what exactly should we expect from this new film? Or can you can so, you not from share the too film much? Or the series? From from so, the series. So, so the series is a drama about a a young man who tried to commit suicide, and um, after surviving the suicide attempt, he, ha- he moves back home to his uh, stepmother. And you know, it's I, I like to call it a never-ending puzzle because it it touches on a lot of things, um, like Mount Johnson syndrome, or you know, and Mount Johnson by proxy, which is a, an illness where uh, usually people hurt themselves for attention. And all I can tell you is that the last 20 seconds of the season finale, you discover so much. And the person that you were rooting for the whole time is actually the villain. You know, it, it, Ooh, it, 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 it changes I'm the whole hooked. game. So it, it's a very dark series about secrets and uh, about a cult. I will tell you that. Oh, my God. So, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm hooked already. Mm-hmm. I'm hooked. There's a cult yes. in this. <laughs> I can't wait for everybody to watch it. <laughs> so wait, you're working on a series and a movie, a film? Yes, so I look every at year this, I make Look a at film, this busy you know, guy. Hustling. I can barely do, you know, three things over here at the studio. You're doing two, a series and a movie. <laughs> wow. And it's two yes, different, it's yes, two different yes. casts? It's a completely different cast. Jeez. And this film is, uh, this one is inspired by what's happening right now during the pandemic. So uh, since the pandemic started, um, Homeland Security has increased their different deportation. And we don't watch, we don't see this on television because everything that's being covered is about COVID. 
And um, this is inspired by a true story of a woman who went to court and on her way to her way back to her business, because she's a business owner, she got cornered by ICE agents and they deported her right in front of her. Uh, well, they arrested her in front of her five year old kid by breaking her car window and dragging her out of the car. Oh and, and, you know, it's, it's a story about uh, about what the you know, what Homeland Security and what ICE is doing illegally, which is stopping, uh, you know, profiling people because they're, they look Latino. And then um, also showing them a fake, uh, you know, search warrant or an arrest warrant uh, that's not signed by a, fair, by a judge, by a criminal judge, and, you know, intimidating them into opening the door or breaking their windows and dragging them out and deporting them. Uh, so it's, it's something that's happening during the pandemic. It's been happening since before, but it's more prominent now because no one's talking about it. And mm. I, think, I think it's despicable. I think it's disgusting. And I think that ICE needs to be abolished. And anybody that agrees that, you know, what, with what ICE is doing, Y'all need to go and find something to do other than not. I'm just not gonna say it because I'm upset. Yeah, <laughs> but no, cause no one's <laughs> saying anything about it. You know, people no, keep you're right. And, and it's and it, 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 it makes me upset. You know, the more I mean, the you're a hundred percent correct. The most thing that you see on the news is about like obviously the deaths, just like what I was talking about earlier today. That's really what everybody's kind of focusing on as far as and even not only the deaths, uh, but also what everything is closing, what is not going to be open anymore. Like these are little things that really aren't as a big impact as far as people getting dragged outside their car, being sent back, you know, or being mm-hmm. arrested in front of their families. And all they're trying to do is survive this pandemic that's going on in the whole world, not just in the United States either. Yeah. So it's crazy. And I'm, I commend you like for like for allowing this to inspire you to inform people you know what i mean and at the Mm -hmm. same time like you are just highlighting the latino community and just speaking up for them and the rights and and like you're using your gift for so much good it's really crazy that's why i always say you're going to be blessed with so many awards Mm -hmm. your name is going to be known people are going to know who you you. are um and they can come back and listen to ladies night radio when we had these interviews with you and they're gonna be playing it (laughs) (laughs) so i mean at the end of the day like i'm so proud of you and i'm so i cannot wait until you you know to see these like i already seen like some of your films two of your films already and they're great you do a phenomenal job and i can't wait to see these up and coming ones um but also if you need extras in the background you know somebody like me crazy maria we, we got loaded here we ready if you need backgrounds. We ready. <laughs> I can always yeah, be also. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, do it. Yes. Uh, no, um, listen, um, I, I'm just really glad that you guys have given me a platform from the very beginning. You know, and I always say, and I'll say it again, whenever and if I ever win an Oscar or an Emmy, the very first first people I'm coming to is you guys. The good I'm gonna news, bring that baby. Award and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come. Yeah, I'll be like, forget everybody else. Y'all, can wait. <laughs> Y'all been denying me for a long time. Oh, I'm gonna go to the ladies' night. Ladies' night. Radio, you heard it here, Breakfast Club. Don't night. try to book them. Yes. First. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you for sure. But yeah, so yeah, I love you guys too. How's your mom doing, by the way? She has her own YouTube She's channel, good. cooking channel. She does. She has a cooking show every. She has a new episode every Thursday. And you know, I, 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 she, she started doing them when, when we went on shutdown, which is I'm glad because I had to convince her. I had been trying to get her in front of the camera for so long, and she finally said, "Well, let's do it." So we do an episode every every Thursday, and you know, she's um she's happy. She loves she loves cooking. She makes her own recipes. Can I just she, can I just tell bad. you, my mom started following your mom. And she really? like loves okay, the. Re- you're gonna tell me what she is. I can tell my mom. She love loves this. the recipes, and she's like, "Oh, look, look what she's making oh now." God. So yes, definitely. That's awesome. <laughs> I'll tell my mom. <laughs> my, your mom definitely has fans over here at the ladies' <laughs> night. Trust us. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh my god, but I love you guys. Tell her we said the lady said hello. Um, but we, we also want to go into another topic that we have. It's a question of the night. It's something that, um, you know, I've definitely love. I know a lot of people have, are going to have something to say about this. But tonight's question, Jorge, I would love to get your input on it. It's tonight. Are you guys okay. ready? Okay. Ready. Yeah. I, I'm sure everybody's going to have a different answer. But do you, Jorge, consider flirting cheating? Oh, um. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I know. Because it's, it's a tough one, but. Some people are going to say yes. I, some people know, are going to be like no, or some some people are going to be like I, I don't I don't consider cheating, but I do consider it an outlet for cheating, like something that can lead you to cheating, depending on who you who you're with. That's my that's my whole thing. Like I'm very secure who I am. I, I I've said it before. I'm not a jealous person. I'm not the kind of person who wants to check phone or like or, or have someone check on me constantly. 
So if I go up to like a party and somebody's starting with, you know, with my partner or, or, or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll be like, okay, well, cool, you know, I got him. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I got him. I don't care. <laughs> That's just me. Like what? He's with me, honey. You can flirt with him all you want, but he's yeah. sleeping in my bed. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got that shit on Really? Lock. Hey, really quick. We forgot to mention your mom's uh, uh, cooking page. So we are having a question over here in the chat. Oh. They want to know where they can find your mom's cooking uh, show. It's at... Tessa Galan, Cocina con Tessa, which is, it's spelled, um, well, it's Cooking with Tessa. So you can, actually, you can find it by Cooking with Tessa, and um, and you can find it, because it's on our website. I'm putting it on, on our, our, on my production company with. Jorge, I'm yeah. putting it on our uh, chat box, in our chat box. It's Cocina con Tessa, right? Yes. And that's on YouTube. That's on YouTube. All together. Does she have an Instagram? YouTube, Instagram, yes. everywhere. Yes, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing for Instagram, yeah. Yeah, you guys make sure you follow his mom. She is such a sweet lady, and she has amazing recipes. The food looks so good, and you know the video work, the camera work is amazing because her son, the director over here, <laughs> yeah. got that down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the lighting, she got the, the script, lighting. everything. Like yes, whatever you need. Last time he was here, he was, they were telling us how like they kind of bumped heads in the beginning, but now it's like awesome. They know yes. each other. It's so funny. <laughs> It's like, is it because you're like directing your mom and your, your mom's like, she doesn't look you as a director. She looks at you as her son. So I know. she's talking back I to, to you. I tell her mom, listen, like, <laughs> like, you are my mom, but when we're on set, like, it's a privilege to be on set <laughs> and we're business partners. Like, you're a biz- you're my partner. I'm your partner. Like, you've got to understand if I'm telling you, you got to do this. It's for, like, it's because I'm trying to make you look good. And then she would just get upset. But, you know, she got the hang of it now. She's a total pro now. She's a pro. She, like, she's a natural. She knows everything. She knows the whole She's a, she knows the whole lingo now. She's like quiet on set. I'm like, Oop, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, your mom is a natural for sure, for sure. All right, so Goddess Loaded, yeah. I got to ask you, do you consider flirting cheating? That is the question of the night. I can't wait. I want to hear. If you're in the chat box, please, please, please let us know what you think. Do you consider flirting cheating? That is the question of the day. And also, what is flirting? Um, Because flirting can be a lot of things to some people. You know what I mean? So let me know. Let me know, Maria. Is there somebody in the chat box you were pointing at? Uh, No, no, no. Um, I see. Thank you, everybody that's in here. Uh, Queen K is in here. Hi, Queen K. What's up, girl? And Snacker says, thank you for sharing the page because I shared um, Jorge's mom uh, page on here. Okay. But also she said, or he uh, he said, I'm sorry, flirting ain't cheating. I agree. It's an invitation, says Tony. Oh, oh was that Snackers? That's my crew right there. Hey. Shout out to Snack Club. Hey, it's snackers. not an invitation. I was agreeing with you up until that part. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so he's saying I do agree with that, though. That it's an invitation? <laughs> he says, it's if flirting ain't yeah. cheating, it's an invitation, says Tony. And so then, if they accept the invitation, then it's cheating. I get what he's saying. I get what yeah. he's saying. So it's kind of like dropping hints? Is that, is, I mean... But it's also an invitation to what? Like, so the person can take it as an invitation to flirt back or to pursue something else going the deeper the into bathroom, it. But then there's like, to the bathroom, to the bedroom, to the car. But then there's like different levels of flirting. So I yes. think this is that level of flirting where, where he or she probably wants that person to come knock on that door. But then you have like the innocent flirting. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, hey, well, you wearing them pants today, mm-hmm. boo. But like, I you, see you in but, that yeah. shirt. But Maria, <laughs> Maria, this, this is it though. Like it could be innocent flirting to you. But if I'm the guy you're flirting innocently with, I'm going be taking it a whole different way and be like oh okay this is an invitation she wants to get some well you that's know? when then you have to have that conversation the skirt like hold up brother i was just giving you a comment why are you, it's you just, gotta it, bite back it's hard because it's like what is like there like maria said I know. there's definitely different levels of flirting yes. i'm a very flirty person sometimes i don't even realize it i'm very touchy yes um i've been in situations where you know wives will give me dirty looks and i'm like i'm not trying not in to front of the wives no. like not a like, savage with her shit <laughs> damn no, but, <laughs> why is over here? I, like, why, I'm a hey, savage. why is his wife <laughs> mad that I'm flirting with him? What is, mean, her? What is so her problem? So I don't insecure. want your man. You're so insecure. <laughs> I just bought him a drink and spanked his butt. <laughs> I did oh that my once, God. actually, with my friends. <laughs> Please <husband>. don't. <laughs> no, no, so listen. No, I wasn't even flirting. But I think like sometimes when you're very extroverted and outgoing, whatever you say or do can also 
also be misconstrued as like flirting because that's just how you are. There's some people who just gravitate toward each other and it's easy to have conversation. It's easy to get along with somebody that might not necessarily be flirting um, or an invitation. I'm also super like like sexual you guys have heard me on the show i talk about shit all the time no we do too i do too i do too i know just because i talk about eating ass doesn't mean i'm inviting you to come and eat (laughs) Eat my my ass ass, right like hey you never know you put it out there in the universe god will answer them unless you're good at it (laughs) (laughs) okay hold on this conversation this topic has the chat going so um snackers agreed yes there are different levels of flirting um, George is up in here. Hey, George, you over here uh, multitasking, I see. He says, an invitation for him to come deep clean my house. <laughs> Get it, Jorge. Don't yell at the mic. But I mean it. Like, if someone's flirting with, with my, my significant other, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I want to come over and come back. I'll be like, okay, great. You can start the bathroom. <laughs> you can move to the kitchen. You know? Oh, you had my mind somewhere else, Neil. Wow. So- Which is code for dick, though. The bathroom or the kitchen. <laughs> 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 Which is a code for eating ass. <laughs> that would, that be, would the be the kitchen. kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> them groceries ah, out. Groceries. Hey. <laughs> okay, so uh, Snacker said, girl getting some dirty looks, talking about the wife. <laughs> Tony said, uh, that's when you bring your significant other over and be like, hey, listen to this. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. I'm down for that play. Okay. <laughs> Snackers was like, por- por- because, por- because I'm going to say this. <laughs> I know a lot of people at work have work wives, work hus- hubbies. And so do you tell your, your real husband and wife that you have a, a work wife or husband? Because oh, that oh, that could get hairy real quick. Because that's though. kind real of quick. real quick. Would you guys consider that flirty? It depends. What's your wife Which doing one? for you? Right. What's your work wife? When you call them work wife, you? like, hey, wifey, like, you know, if you have a work uh, wife or a work hubby and you, you know what that means, like you buy each other lunch, you go right. have lunch together, you talk a lot, you just bond, you, you have that connection with somebody at work that you know you can trust and you have that like yeah. relationship with, but nothing sexual, obviously. Well, I don't know. I've been following this page on Instagram and he'd be like, hey, where are the Sanchos and Sanchas at? Hit me up. And hella people are like DMing him saying like, I have a work Sancho and like I fuck him real good and we go to lunch and we do this, but it's all work. And I'm a good Sancha and I'm going to stay quiet. I'm not going to say anything. Dang. I'm going to fulfill his needs at work and vice versa. He fulfills mine. So it just, it gets hairy. I think like. One, it has to do with, like, how confident you are, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you're confident and you know, like, you're, I guess you can never be 100% sure, though. Like, if you're confident, like, to me, if someone flirts with the person that I'm with, I'm like, yeah, that's right. Like, <laughs> that's my boo. Oh, it won't bother you. Me. Oh, it depends. It depends. I mean, it depends, like, again, the different level and advancement of it, you know? Okay, because- what what would not bother you? Let me ask you that. If you saw somebody flirting, quote, unquote, with your husband, what would you, what would not bother you if, if you saw it? I think whatever's done in front of me wouldn't bother me. Because I'm able to feel the vibe and see what's going on. Okay. And then if I see like, oh, that was a little too much, then I'm going to be like, yo, like take a step back. But what if they're at work? Well, that's the thing that you don't know. That's where that trust has to come in. Like, so it's hard. It's really hard because, again, you could be really flirty. Like, again, I'm really flirty. I'm very outward about how I feel about sexual things. And I had an actual coworker who then made, like, an in- innuendo, like, about the two of us. And he, um, like, he has a girl. And I'm just like, yo, like, you don't know me that good to be, like, fucking with me like that. Like, I'm open and I'm flirty and I'm whatever, but not toward you or toward, like, I'm going to I'm gonna come between you and your girl. Right. Yeah. Like, that's where you draw the line because that's where the invitation comes in. If someone else starts flirting with you and they're making innuendos about you guys actually, like, doing some shit and you know they have a partner, that's where I'm like, yeah. nah, dude. Like, okay. Yeah. Gotta, that's like, too much. Cut that shit that's, out. That's crossing the line for sure. For sure crossing the line. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can I just say something real quick, though? Yes. I think for me, it's just, uh, I mean, the reason why I don't consider it cheating is because um, I dated someone for like three years who always, like always like flirted with everybody, but that was just his, his like, personality. way of being. He's yeah. very nice. 
yeah and and it's like i would I, oh my god i had so many friends who would talk shit to me about it. it's like oh my god like why are you with this person obviously like you know this and that he's an he's a fuck boy and this and that and i'm like well no because i like knew like at the beginning like i was like is that is that what he is or what is but you that's know that's probably what attracted you to fun. him Probably. I mean, same reason why. Like, no, I him being hearing. flirty, not yeah, a fuck yeah. boy. Him being a fuck boy. No. Sign me up. Oh, sign me up. <laughs> because at the end of the day, when you're flirty, that means you got like some charm. You're a charming mm-hmm. person. Yes. You're you're caring. You're like flirty. You usually people that are flirty and people that take them as flirty is p- somebody that comes up to you and f- feels genuinely interested in you. How you're doing? How's your day? buys you lunch oh hey i saw this um coconut water i thought of you here's for you or hey i bought you starbucks this morning i left it on your desk that is be- that is sweet but like, that's what yes. people that's a charming yeah. trait and that can also be considered yeah. flirting for sure. and and like he was saying because i think that there's i think sometimes i'm like that whereas you know i can be charming in that way but people take it a wrong way so his I think that's what attracted maybe him to his ex was that he was so charming mm-hmm. and so nice and caring and flirty and, 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 and yeah, of course it's a, it's an attractive trait, right. but you also have to understand when it's like just that's who they are and when they actually want more Looking because I actually have a friend and he opens all of my doors. He, um, he will pull out like our seat or like he'll mm-hmm. wait for me to go in first into the room and he's paid the bill a few times and we're just friends like we do not we're not uh, attracted to each other in that way but he does tell me stories on how sometimes girls fall for him and he's just not interested in them I was like but look let me explain something to you because right now unfortunately uh, them being like that is it's that that's not common for a lot of men opening doors being right. you know uh chivalry like that yeah. that doesn't it's not as common anymore and so your your parents your mom you she did a great job with you that's how yes. you know it's a good thing to have you know not every woman wants that but it's it's like I'm I'm an independent female. I'm a bit of a feminist, but I enjoy when somebody opens the door for me, yeah, even if it's a woman opening the door chance. for me. You know what I mean? Like it's if pretty, she yeah. if she holds the door for me while I'm walking into the we bank sideways up in this. <laughs> you know, I just mean it's a it's a nice gesture. Like you know what I mean? Yes. And and that's what like and literally walks to my door, opens it and closes it. Like so that I guess like you have to understand that is such a charming trait that you have. That some, some women are, or some people are going to take it the wrong way. <laughs> maybe not the wrong way, but take it as like, oh, maybe he likes me. me. Maybe yeah. he's into me. Mm-hmm. And that's not it at all. Like, yeah. I understand that. But, you know, I just think because we're both at that level, we're like, we're just friends. Like, we're right. not attracted to each other. But I, and so that's where I feel like flirting, like that, I guess, is a form of flirting in a sense. Mm-hmm. When you're like, you know, chivalry like that and being so caring and like, that, it, buying you Starbucks, like anything right. like that, that's a bit of a flirting. It's just levels of it. Yeah. No, yes. si te pasas, that's okay. Now you got to know when you cross the line. You know what I mean? Like if you over here grabbing their butt at work and spanking okay, them. Okay, I have a scenario. You guys tell me if it was not cheating because I wouldn't call it cheating, but appropriate or not. So uh, this is damn. This is a minute ago, maybe over, maybe like ten years ago, maybe seven. Uh, we were at a Halloween party, birthday party. And it was a, uh, everybody was dressed up and there was a guy who was, it was actually, they were in a throuple. So he was like the little Twinkie. He <laughs> had like this really like tight body and I don't even know what the fuck he was dressed up as, but he was like, had nothing on top, right? So it was topless, but he had all this like gold shimmer all over his body. He was looking good. Yeah. So me being me, like, uh, and we knew him, right? He was like around at parties. So I just went up to him and I was like, oh, my God, like, you look so fucking good tonight. Like, look at you. And I did put my hands like, on, his on his chest. chest. Ah! <laughs> and then he <laughs> and then he gave me a peck, like on the lips. Right. Mm. Oh, my husband, ex-husband was at the party. And as soon as that happened, I felt like oh my the God. fucking death stare. <gasps> and I was drunk. So I come over and I'm just like, oh, did you see that? Like, <laughs> that was funny. Like, That's never happened. Fine. Like, <laughs> It was totally nothing sexual. Like, he's 100% not into females. Like, I was just admiring, like, how he looked really good. (laughs) Oh, my God. I didn't think it was a big deal, but apparently he did. 
Uh, what well, do that's, y'all think? You know what? It it, ha- it, it so somebody wait. stuck stuck their their tongue in. No, my it was ear. a peck. Oh no, no, oh, in my ear. ear. Oh, so oh. Yeah, and and he also wasn't into girls, <laughs> and he just came over and he was just like, "You look hot tonight." Blah. And Corey was in like diagonal. <laughs> Her mommy, husband. And I was like, "Oh shit! Like, I gotta go use the restroom." But I mean, he didn't think nothing of it, like because you know. Oh, but no, you still feel guilty. Like, you still feel guilty. I felt I guilty because I, I know. Didn't feel guilty at like all. if I saw <laughs> some girl <laughs> putting their damn uh, tongue in, you know, yeah. my husband's ear. Regardless if she's time, a lesbian or not, or not it would still like, bother girl, you. Girl, hold the fuck up, <laughs> Jorge. What were you gonna say before well, we wrap up this on, topic? Is, ex- is, is he your ex-husband now? Yeah, he's. My <laughs> 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 Okay, so, well, 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 hear me out. Like, hear me I, out. I just, because he said that, he got really upset. What if he wasn't jealous that he kissed you, but he was jealous, like, that he kissed you, like, he was jealous. Oh. That he wanted what to if kiss? What if it wasn't you? Oh. But he was like, how dare you kiss her? You know, like, but not because it's, like, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> you you creating no. one of your yeah. novelas. In- <laughs> the novelas. No, yeah. The novelas. He's, he's just insecure. It was insecure. All right. Okay. No, yeah, that, I was going to say that, yeah. That, I'm telling you guys, an hour goes by so fast. we got to wrap up the topic because, of course, we have two more segments to go. Actually, three more. Um, you know I love playing a good game of, um, of some games on air. So I'm going to put you first, um, Jorge. You already know how to play this one. This one's five seconds, okay? Ooh. You get five yeah, seconds yeah. to name three things. And then if you don't make it, you're going to hear an alarm. All right. Um, are you ready? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have five <laughs> seconds to name three things you will find in a Latinx home. Uh, a chancla, a plant, and a phone. Hey! Okay. <laughs> Those chanclazos. Yeah, chancla. I like that his, the chancla was the, the first one. In my head was like the last supper. <laughs> the last supper. <laughs> we can, the Virgin Mary. <laughs> A cross. Can, Crosses can everywhere. <laughs> Frijoles. Oh. You can't do that while I'm drinking. Frijoles. And they're not Goya, okay? And they're not, not Goya. Goya. They're not canned. Sure I'll tell you what you won't find. You won't find Goya Frijoles. Yay! Yay! That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, Maria, you're next. Crazy Maria. Here we go. Name. You have five seconds to name three ways you know your mom is mad at you. The look. Uh, the eyes and when she calls me my middle name Isabel <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna give you the look and the eyes that's kind no, of the same no, thing no 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 yes same. that's kind of the same no no All right. no, no explain no. give us evidence alright what, what are the two differences the eyes and the look ready go so when we're across like when we when I used to go out uh, with them to the quinceañeras and weddings and stuff and she would get mad at me the <laughs> eyes would be like these demon eyes and then what's the look black, <laughs> and then the look were like come sit over here Nah, it's the same thing. <laughs> 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 All right, Lode, here oh, you, you go. You need a shot. God is Lode. Yeah, take a shot, Maria. Take a shot. This game always makes my fucking palms sweat. <laughs> <laughs> At least it doesn't make your ass sweat. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Name three reasons. Okay. Whoa, what was that? You all right over there? Oh, it's the airplanes. Airplane. All right. Name, you have five seconds to name three reasons why kids won't do their homework. Go. Um, they don't want to. They're sleepy. They're bored. Okay, just in oh. time. You barely, you barely. I mean, bored. I'll take a sip. I'm like, oh, I finished it already. <laughs> just kidding. All right. So that plays the game. It's a quick, quick game. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and jump into our new, new segment. That's right. Our new segment of the night is with our beautiful... Hey, all right. Got the bell there. All right. Uh, the new segment is called Ride the Wave with Goddess Lore. Ride the vibe. Ride the vibe. Ooh. I'm so sorry. Hey. 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 Get that Anderson <clears throat> Pack vibe. All right, guys. You know what it is. It's time to ride the vibe with Goddess Lore. So I want to ask you guys, and you too, Jorge, how have you guys been feeling okay. in like the libido department? What's up with your sexual desires? Have you noticed any change? Extreme high. Extremely high. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. T- like 10 years apart, like 30s, 40s, and. Come on, Maria. Yeah, what? The you. Same. What? Extremely high? Okay, Jorge. Too high. Chime in, Jorge. Too um, high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. About, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with everybody. Hi. Right? It's on high. I'm really happy to say that I was tripping. I thought it was just me, but people no. were hitting me up on Instagram and saying, like, yo, why am I horny all the time? All the time. I'm like, okay, it's not just me. Let's do this. 
So I'm going to tell you guys why. Right now, Mars is currently in Aries. It's been there since June 27th. And so it's going to be there for a cool six months, guys. So um, mm. get your lube ready Ooh. because when Mars is in Aries, it is definitely serving up sex, guys. It is like the fiery sex planet. Mars in Aries is dripping in masculinity. It rules over our sex drive and our primal urges, forcing us to act on our desires. It's the planet of lust and action. So during this time, you might feel more dominant, assertive, more masculine traits, called to action, taking back control of your life. You may also think about sex in unconventional ways. So, um, you know, just go with it. I also pulled a card for the weekend vibe, and the card that came up was the Emperor. If y'all need a visual, go to my Instagram at Lotus Hustle. It's up. So the Emperor, he is sitting on his throne, and he is the epitome of balanced masculinity. He's authority, he's ambitious, he's powerful, and he is calling us to embrace our own inner warrior, to claim our authority over our own life, step into our ambitious side. He's a true balanced masculine, meaning that he knows that in order to reign, you also have to serve. So writing that balance between being dominant and being submissive, the masculine and the feminine. I talk about this a lot. Yo, it's that flow. We got to get into it. Masculine and Mm -hmm. feminine. It's not about gender. It's just about traits. So this weekend, I'm going to invite you guys to ride the vibe of masculinity. I want y'all to get in touch with your sexual desires. Now is a good time to explore your sexual energy. Take a dip in your lustful thoughts with confidence. No judgment. You got to be free. Sexual energy is the essence of creation. Like that's how we were all born. This is how like things come into existence using that energy. So use the sexual energy to bring your fantasies into reality. Whatever they may be. Uh, Mars and Aries are both fire. So this is a call to action. Release your fire. Assert your sexual desires. Intention your orgasm. Explore the quote-unquote taboo. Purchase that toy that you've been thinking about that fills you with those nervous butterflies, right? Push your comfort zone. Take a video of yourself. Take a picture of yourself. You ain't got to send it. But if you are, know that there's rules. You know, there's creepers out there. So don't show your face. Don't show your tattoos or get a good editor. I don't know if Jorge can help us out with that. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, sexual play, (laughs) sexual play is so much more than just arousal and pleasure and satisfaction. It really is a spiritual journey. So think about that. Ride that wave of masculinity. Hop on that masculinity tip this weekend. Or dive in and ride the whole thing. This is Goddess Lore asking you, what vibe do you want to ride this weekend? Ooh, ride the vibe with Goddess Lore. I want to ride the big tornado vibe. I say you want to take that whole thing. Take the whole thing. We got to wrap it up. We got to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for everybody that was in the chat box on um, the Good News Radio. Thank you, um, Jorge, for being my guest tonight. Do you want to give a quick shout out and where they can find you? Yes, you guys can find me at Jorge Salazar Jr. And... Trust me, just spell it how you want it. I'm the only Shalalpa in, in the world, so oh. you'll find. Yes, okay. You will find. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Goddess Lore, for joining thank us tonight. You. And uh, thank you, Crazy Maria, for running the board over here. That's our cue to get out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's episode. Please share us with your friends and your family. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Mysterious Jax. Yeah, this yeah. is Ladies Night Radio Show. Let's and just remember it. one thing, ladies. You, you are enough. enough. Love you. Oh. Have a good night. Hey. Bye. Hey. Bye. Hey. Hey. Bye. Bye, Jorge. Love you. We love you, Jorge. Jorge, you were awesome. I need to meet you in person. (laughs) You will. You will. He'll probably come again. You can exit. I remember listening to the last show that he was on. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. We can't do 10.